Hello and welcome to Module 10 Network Management. Please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're ready. All right, so um, let us begin. So one of the first thing we need to take a look at is the Cisco Discovery Protocol. So the CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, is a Cisco proprietary layer two protocol. All right, so that's one of the first thing you need to uh, write down. And also, that is periodic advertisements are sent to the neighboring devices, and it is enabled by default. So write those down. Um, this is important because attackers know this, hackers know this, and they may use it to probe and fingerprint the network and find out, you know, for doing reconnaissance attacks. Um, but it could be used to manage your network, of course. Uh, that's the whole idea. And... <clears throat> So please also write the following down. If you want to disable, disable it on an interface, you have to type the command no CDP enable. If you're going to disable it on all the interfaces, on every single interface, then you type CDP, uh, no CDP run. Okay. If you want to enable it, of course, you type CDP run globally or no, or no, uh, or CDP or um, what is it? What's the other one? CDP enable on an interface, CDP run if you want to re-enable it globally. All right. If you're not going to use it at all, please disable it. There is no need to use it because this it, it, you're better off getting rid of it. All right. But here's how it works. So uh, when you type show CDP neighbors, okay, this is your device, device S1, and on a local interface. So the app which shows that there is another device called S1. So this is S1, not your device, your router one. So your neighbor is S1 and connected to the G001, all right? Uh, about 179 minutes ago, he is a switch, the capability of doing switching. This is a C3 6050 switch. And this is the port of the switch the sending the information to you. That means this port is connected to you. And that's how you're getting that information from. All right, so you'll, if you type details, you'll get even more information. You'll know what the IP address of the switch is, okay? So it's going out of that port, that information is going out of the port, and this is your port, okay? So this is important because sometimes these may get confused, confusing and to find out which is which. All right, so show CDP command is the one that you want to use. Show CDP neighbors. So write that down. Show CDP neighbors or show CDP neighbor detail to get information of uh, the neighboring device. All right. Uh, next is another protocol that is similar to the CDP is the layer link discovery protocol, LLDP. This is what I want you to write about that. Write down that it's vendor neutral. It's similar to the Cisco CDP, but may be enabled by default. It depends on who the vendor is. LLDP must be configured separately to transmit and receive LLDP packets. So, and this is how you would do that. That's what I mean. So the commands to do that is you type in, please write those down. If you want to enable it on an interface, um, you type in, Interface gigabit zero one, let's say, then you say transmit and receive LLDP transmit, LLDP receive. If you want to do it globally, you'd say LLDP runs pretty much the same thing, but please write this. This you could do this to non Cisco switches, right? The CDP only runs on Cisco switches, LLDP runs on anyone, including Cisco, of course. All right, you can type show CD LLDP neighbors. Pretty much it gives you the same type of information, right? This is your neighbor. This is the local interface, your local interface, and it's a router. And it's this is the interface of your neighbor sending you the information. And here's the details, of course. So it's pretty much the same thing. And in fact, you get more good stuff out of it, right? More information, which we're not going to get into. All right. So... Let's take a look at the, now we'll take a look at uh, the network time protocol. So 
it is the software clock is the primary source of the t of time for the systems. It is important to synchronize the time across all the devices on the network. So that's extremely important. So anytime you create a file, you want all the routers when they are communicating with each other, sending update to each other, they, they are in sync with time because you don't want to have one router that is off by a year or, or sometimes by even in just seconds, it could be a problem. All right, so we want them to be all in sync. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to make one router as the master. We're going to make sure we set the clock to it, like just like that. So please write this command. This is one of the first steps you're going to do. So the master clock, you set the clock, you go to the privilege mode, and you set the clock and the time, and then you're going to make it into a master. And then all the other routers will use that clock of the master to set their clocks, okay? Um, so NTP on the network allows routers to synchronize their time settings with the NTP server, and they are using port 123. Uh, networks use hierarchical system resources, uh, sources just like this. So this is stratum, which is really stratum zero. This is the actual global clock, but we usually use, you start right here. This is going to be the master. It's going to be the stratum one and everybody gets in sync with that. You can have other stratums, but typically we're only going to have one stratum one in our network and everybody will uh, connect to it. All right. The maximum is 15 hops away. You could be. Uh, so typically we're not do more than one anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. All right. The stratum level is defined as the number of hop counts from the authoritative, authoritative source. The synchronized time is distributed across the network by using NTP. Remember, the maximum hop count is 15. All right, so please write the stratum 0, 1, and write the following bullet points, right? The first sentence of each. So you'll know. All right, so you can use the command show clock to verify that the clock has been configured correctly. You can say NTP server and give it whoever whoever the server is you could type that ip address now if you type the command um let's say ntp master one here then the router one will become master the master and everybody will go to it whatever the interface ip address of it right so uh and then you go to the then you go to the client and you say NTP server and you give this IP address. This is the IP address of the router who became a master. All right. So show an NTP association that's going to give you um, verify that R1 is synchronized with the NTP server. And you can use status too. Show NTP status. That will also verify if R1 is uh, synchronized with the NTP server. All right, um, so before we move on, uh, let me show you, uh, let me open up, let me do a file, and, and I want you just, to, for example, let's say we connect a router to a switch in a multi-access topology. So just we have a whole bunch of routers connected to a switch. Configure all the LAN interfaces that are connected towards the switch, like we did with the with OSPF in the same subnet. Now assume R1 is going to have the interface 192.168.10.1, right? And it's going to be the master. So what you do, you go to R1, your R1 with the config T. And you say uh, NTP master. This is the command NTP master stratum one. All right. And then this is on R1. Now you go to R2. In fig mode, let's say R2 is, is in the multi access and all the other routers. Um, you go to the config mode. And then what do you type in there? You type that the NTP server is 
192.168.10.1. What's this IP address? This is I, this IP address is the IP address of the interface of R1 that's facing the switch in the multi-axis. And that's it. If all then you do the same thing to R3, R4, R5, and all the routers that are connected to the multi-axis. They're all going to go to R1 and grab the clock and synchronize with it. That's what NTP does. All right, so please write this down and write uh, on how you would actually set that up. All right, now let's talk about SNMP. Go on back in here. The Simple Network Management Protocol. So what do you need to know about that? It is used to monitor and manage network performance. Please write that down. It is used to uh, monitor and manage network performance. It's also to find and solve network problem, network problems, and plan for network growth. All right. Uh, the SNMP manager. There's a manager. There's an agent, and there is a MIP, a management information base. So you have a computer or a router. In this case, it could be um, a manager. And uh, so the manager pulls the agents. The agents could be other routers or switches or other devices and queries the MIB, the management information base, or SNMP agents on UDP port 161. SNMP agents send any SNMP traps to the SNMP manager on UDP 162. All right, so uh, here's what you need to write down. SNMP manager is the one that pulls the agents. The master is the router. So he pulls the agents using port 161, all right? The agents, which are uh, other devices, all the other devices that have to respond to the master, uh, they use port 62 to send traps. Traps are information that are sent to the master because he pulls them, right? All right, the other commands that you need to know about is the get command. Get command is manager collects information from the end, uh, from the uh, agents. So all of these are different agents, and here's your manager. In this case, it's a PC gathering the information. Um, you got the set command is when the manager changes configuration. In here, he sends information to be changed. And the trap is when agent sends information to the manager unsolicited. So this guy says, hey, I need to send you some information. He sends you a trap to the manager. All right? Remember, the manager goes in, and every, each one of these guys have the MIP, right? The, um, the management information base. So when they go in, they grab the information from the MIB and send traps to the SNMP manager. All right, so please, uh, you don't have to take it. So we just talked about how it works. So you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to write that down. Um, you don't have to worry about that. The traps, we talked about that. SNMP version, oh, we need to know a little bit about the SNMP version. Um, what you need to know about the SNMP version is that SNMP version 3 uses username, or please write these down, username, Right here, username authentication provides data protection using HMAC MD5 or HMAC SHA and encryption using the DES, triple DES, or AES encryption. Okay. Uh, also, I want you to write down that SNMP version 1 and version 2C they use community strings that control access to the MIB. Community strings are plain text passwords. So SNMP community strings authenticate access to MIP objects, community strings, read only and read and write. All right. So you can write the first statement up here about version one and two and just read, read only and read and write. Those are the type. You don't have to write down the definitions of all of them. All right. I'm going to stop right here. And then when we will we'll have to talk about the objects and the polling. And you can use um, a GUI version of it, but um, if you if, if that's available, that that's not available on our routers. So please write everything and submit that, and we'll continue with this on the next video.